What is up, YouTube? Welcome in and welcome back. So today I'm going to take another look at uh, Shirley Bassey. Um, I am intrigued by the Shirley Bassey fans and their passion. Um, I talked about this, my interaction with Shirley Bassey fans on another video of Gigi Delana uh, doing a, co um, a cover of melodies of, of hers. I'll leave the link uh, uh, at the end of the video. Um, but I, I wanted to touch on the subject because uh, sometimes I feel like it, some of their reactions are a bit over the top. And I got to start wondering, like, why is that? Why, why is that? I mean, I do a lot of reactions to a lot of different female artists and the, the phrase, the best ever is not that unusual. Uh, I mean, i I hear it all the time with guitar players, uh, you know, um, and singers. But there's, I think there's something else with the Shirley Bassey fans that I've been trying to kind of dig out and figure out what it is. Um, so like I said, I think there's something else going here. And with most fan bases, uh, with most artists, uh, the people that are really big time fans, they know a lot more about the artist than just their music. Um, so I'm going to need some help here from the Shirley Bassey fans because what I'm thinking is, uh, when I looked at her past, uh, you know, she was born in 1937 in the UK, uh, Wales in particular, uh, of mixed parents. Um, and even though in her small community where she lived, that was not, uh, un that wasn't uncommon for it, uh, where she lived, but it was a uh, kind of a constant problem as she was growing up, uh, um, and particularly everywhere else. Um, and I think at an early age, she did not understand the depth of racism and how deep it goes. Um, I think partly because, you know, like she said, she was brought up in a, in a mixed family, so she probably didn't have as that intense kind of racism that you see a lot of times. But I think she, um, I know, it, I, and, you know, again, when you, when you go to like Wikipedia, it, does, it never delves down into this, some of this stuff, but I did find something uh, about her. And one time when she was in the United States, uh, this kind of illustrated for me was that she was, she was in a, I don't know if it was a restaurant or a bar. It was probably like kind of a, back then, like a lot of times it was the same thing, you know, music, you know, people, you know, you know, you'd have really great musicians in a kind of smoky bar or stuff like that. But anyway, she was in this, uh, this, uh, I think it was a restaurant or bar. It was something with a stage where it was a front and a back. And the people there told her she had to get up and leave. She couldn't sit up front. And that's, and I, the impression I got was she didn't really grasp that at, uh, at that point. Um, and yeah, she was told she couldn't sit at the front table. She had to go to the back. Uh, this was in the United States. Um, and I know England's kind of a little more progressive when it comes to racial issues, especially back then. Um, but, uh, you know, having to get up from where you're sitting to move to a different place, been there, done that. Okay. So I know what that's like and how she probably felt. Um, and a lot of times with artists, um, the, their talent, um, is sometimes diminished, um, by where they live or the color of their skin or who they, or which God they worship. You know, and um, and I think a lot of times people identify with those struggles that the artist may have, um, and makes them even a bigger fan. Um, and just as a quick side, like IU, for instance, like her her early struggles, I think it's one of the things that endears a lot of her their her her fans to her. Um, you know, and some, you know, and then you have, fa uh, you know, artists that never get over their struggles, you know, Whitney Houston, for example. Um, 
But uh, Shirley Bassey, like I said, she had to deal with a lot. Um, and not, you know, and she wasn't just from a mixed race family. It was not only it was mixed race, it was mixed nationalities on top of that. Um, so, um, so like I said, I, I'm guessing that her fans probably know more about her and about the kind of life she had to live and the things she had to put up with, which I think probably endears them to her. Also, I think she's very humble just from my, just from looking at her and how she responds. She just seems like a very humble person. So anyway, uh, the song, um, is, uh, this is my life. I think it's one of her great hits. Um, so yeah, Shirley Bass fans, let me know if I'm wrong. Leave a comment. So let's check this out. Funny how a lonely day can make a person say, what is my life? Funny how a breaking heart can make me start to say, what good is my
Wow. See, that was uh, about halfway through that song. She was psyched. That was very emotional. Um, and you could see it. It was just, it was just pouring out of her. Um, which, you know, kind of goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning, you know, man, she really, you know, and I've seen a couple other artists. Um, the only other artist I've seen that kind of brought that kind of emotion was Diana Kukanova. She did, she has a, Sometimes she has that kind of emotional reaction when she sings, um, because it looked like at the end she was just kind of holding in her emotions. So, um, wow, yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Um, so anyway, yeah, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below, and if you found this interesting, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you later. Bye.